Kia ora Aotearoa, it's August 6th, I'm Zoe George and this is The Podium, wrapping up all the overnight action from the Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games. It was gold and silver in shot put, bronze in wrestling and bowls and heartbreak for fan favourites, the Black Sticks women. It was gold for Tom Walsh in the shot put with a throw of 22.26 metres and silver for Jack O'Gill with a personal best of 21.90 metres. This is what Tom Walsh said after the final. I was knocking on the door with, with the other four four or five throws, which is good. And, and obviously Jack O had a big one on the end there to give me a bit of a boot up the arse. So, uh, no, it was, it was great. And look, the crowd's amazing here. Uh, I don't know if I've been in front of a better crowd, athletics crowd, that gets behind everyone, not... not yeah, for sure, they get behind the English, but they were more than happy to clap and, and support the, all the other athletes. So um, it was an awesome night out there. Jack O'Gill says his first medal on the world stage is particularly special. Like probably one of the best moments I've had. Um, just come back from the heart stuff has been huge and been a really big battle. And like you know, I lost like 25, 30k after my heart issues and being in hospital. So I missed last Commonwealth in um, Gold Coast with, with, that, with that issue. So to come back here and give a silver with PB is, means a lot. Reporter Rob Van Royen has been following all the action. Kia ora, Rob. Good morning. Tom Walsh led from the start, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he set the set the mark with that 21.98 first up. I mean, he could have essentially sat down and uh, for the rest of the comp, but, uh, I mean, he all of his throws were over 21, and then when, when Jacko came out with that 21.90, that's a big PB. His previous personal best was 21.58, so really big PB from Gil. And, um, yeah, as Walsh said afterwards, that sort of got him going, reared him up, and he delivered with that 22.26. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, really good competition in the end. Incredible. Did anyone else get close to the Kiwi duo? No, they didn't. I mean, look, they, they were the only two that went over 21 um, in the competition. Jacko actually went over 21 with three of his, and as I, as I said, Walsh was there all the way. So, yeah, really good story. And I think Gil, I mean, four years ago he pulled out of the Com Games um, on the Gold Coast with myocarditis, and that was before we all knew that word. Mm, yeah. And are you back at the Athletics tomorrow? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll be back here tomorrow. There's a fair bit going on, including uh, the hammer throw final uh, in Sam Tanner in the 1500. Promises to be a, be a good uh, race as well. Excellent. And no transport worries for you? No, no. Made it here um, in one piece. And I, I think that meeting a few days ago, I think the organisers had a two-hour meeting one night to sort out the transport woes. I think that's made a big difference. I, I, to be fair, it's, it came a little too late. I think most of the reporters gave up on the transport system by then. We're just, you're, just about to get a bu- you're just about to get your own bus when you jump on it now. <laughs> Thanks so much, Rob. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Cheers. It was heartbreak for the Black Sticks women against England. Despite the penalty shootout loss, Black Sticks coach Darren Smith says he's proud of the team. Oh, it's been a great tour. You know, we've been on the road for for nine weeks, come through a World Cup. I thought we played really well in the World Cup, and, and you guys, have, I, I hope, feel that as well. And then you come into a come off games, the pool play, we we you know executed our. our um, performances in each of those and, and uh, although we lost to Australia and we don't want that uh, we still came through and, and lined up against an English team that has a, a backbone from a, a bronze medal in Tokyo so this is not a pushover um, and for our group who only has four coming back from Gold Coast you know I'm, I'm proud and, and I think the, the girls should be too. Reporter Ian Anderson was at the hockey semi-final today and a game full of yellow cards, Ian. Yeah, it was. One each for each team and a couple of green cards out there as well, but uh, no goals. Oh, how did that impact our game? Well, Darren Smith spoke afterwards and was pretty balanced given the disappointment, obviously, straight away of that semi-final defeat on penalty shootouts and felt like his team had sort of created a number of good chances but just couldn't take them in that particularly in the first half and as the game drew longer it felt like England were the stronger side but it really did feel like it was going to boil down to a penalty shootout. Mm, That penalty shootout was nail-biting but England were just too good. Yeah, lots of memories from the Gold Coast. Uh, I was at that semi-final in the Commonwealth Games four years ago which New Zealand won on a penalty shootout. It was very similar in terms of difficulties of actually getting the ball past the keeper. 
I remember it wasn't until very late in that penalty shootout, either the fourth or fifth attempt from the New Zealand side, that they scored. Both keepers denied a number of penalties, and that happened again today. Uh, the English keeper, Hinch, denied all of the New Zealanders, and Grace O'Hanlon was pretty good in goal for New Zealand as well, but the English found a way through to get through to the final against either Australia or India. And when's the, the bronze medal game? So that's Sunday night, New Zealand time, and both Darren Smith and the New Zealand skipper were talking afterwards about how obviously they can't dwell on this defeat very long, they have to lift themselves. I imagine they'll be playing India in that bronze medal match, but they don't want to go home without something around their necks. Mm. And any more transport woes for you? <laughs> it's been very quiet and smooth so far today. I did have to uh, re-download my uh, Uber app to get to the hockey, but that was safe and sound. Glad to hear. Thanks so much, Ian. Here's what else made headlines overnight. Wrestler Taylor Ford has won bronze in the 68 kg category against Amy Lee Sephora from Mauritius. Ford did it in 40 seconds and with a big smile on her face. While it wasn't to be for Matthew Oxenham in the 86 kg wrestling, who was second best for bronze this morning. It was also bronze for the Black Jacks women's triples, an emphatic 26-7 win over the Cook Islands. That's now the side's second medal after a bronze in the fours earlier this week. The men's Black Jacks fours lost in the quarterfinals to Wales 18-16. In squash, Joelle King and Amanda Landers-Murphy advanced to the women's double semi-finals and a shot at a medal after beating England 2-0. Their semi will be at 11pm Sunday night New Zealand time. And in the women's beach volleyball, the Kiwis have booked a place in the semis after a 2-0 win over England. Uh, Minister for Sport, Grant Robertson, kia ora. Welcome to the podium. Kia ora, Zoe, from, uh, from live from Birmingham. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, so you've been down at the beach volleyball today. How did that go? Yeah, look, sadly for, for the boys, um, they, they were knocked out um, uh, in the quarterfinals by an amazing Rwandan team. And uh, I'm not sure how many Commonwealth medals uh, Rwanda will have won, but it won't be many. And so this, they look to me like a team who might be able to go all the way. Um, so our guys fought hard, uh, but they couldn't quite get there. Oh, that's a bit of a shame, but exciting to watch though, isn't it, beach volleyball? It's great, and it, it sort of has an automatic hype squad around it. You know, everybody um, gets there. It's pretty, a little bit incongruous. You're in the middle of a fairly industrial bit of Birmingham with a whole lot of sand put down, um, but they make an amazing effort to create the atmosphere around it. And it was really interesting. This was sort of 11 o'clock in the morning on a on a Friday, and uh, you've got... Um, thousands of, of brummy people um, all just coming along to experience it. So huge crowds and massive enthusiasm. And, yeah, no, it's, a great, it's a really great spectator sport for sure. And then you went off to the badminton. How did the Kiwis go? They did amazingly well. Um, um, Oliver Layden-Davis and Anona Pack, um, just really good. And um, they were playing in, in the round of 16 against an Australian pairing and looked incredibly good. And I know they've been um, playing together a lot lately to get their rankings up. They were, they were dominant. They took it two games to, to nil. And um, yeah, we were we positioned ourselves straight behind the Australian support crew, so uh, we enjoyed that one. A bit of banter, Tran Tasman banter going on then. Absolutely, and, and there's a fair <laughs> bit of that throughout the games, to be frank. But uh, <laughs> but no, we had it right there. What's been the highlight for you? Because I was there, and because I lived and breathed every shot, and there were a lot of them. Um, seeing Paul Cole win his gold medal was was just exceptional. Um, I played squash and I wasn't that good at it, but it, you know when you when you've played a game and you know just how much effort goes in to see him play for I think around a hundred minutes, um, just an extraordinary um, physical effort, let alone the skill. Have the athletes inspired you to pick up a sport? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, um, each one of them. It reminds me, as I say, I used to play quite a lot of squash and um, I played or well, didn't play. I had a hit around briefly with Susan Devoy last year, and that. Proved to me that I probably have, have left my squash run a bit late. Um, I reckon my I reckon my future as a Commonwealth athlete's lawn bowls. So that's what that's what I reckon I need to aspire to. We are back on our detour to South Africa with Mark Hinton and the All Blacks. Kia ora, Mark. Yeah, good morning, Zoe. I'm not sure whether we're going to get a gold medal this weekend, but let's wait and see. <laughs> 
<laughs> Fingers crossed. I mean, is this going to be a turning point for the All Blacks, do you think? Well, Adi Savia certainly thinks so. Look, I went along to the stadium today. It's a it's a beautiful stadium. It's it's going to be amazing when it's got 45,000 screaming Afrikaans in it. <laughs> and yeah, Adi Savia was um, in a group that do look like they're carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders, I've got to say, probably for good reason. Um, Adi was kind of just a little bit chipper. I mean, he is their best player, Zoe. I was thinking if they had 15 Adi Savias, uh, they'd be amazing, but they don't actually need 15 Adi Savias. They could probably beat anyone with about four of them because he's just so, so good. But he said today, Zoe, that uh, I asked him, I said, do you see the next two weeks as kind of a, a turning point, uh, a key moment really in this team because they're in such mind and such a, uh, you know, depressing <laughs> run of, of losses. He just looked at me straight in the eye and he said, this week is the turning point. He said, don't worry about next week. He said, we, we nail this week, then we worry about next week. Mm, I like that. One game at a time. You know, if you think too far forward ahead, things will go to custard, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Especially when you're playing at Alice Park next week, which is uh, uh, 75 to 80,000 people. And uh, it is one of the hardest places to play. So you don't want to start thinking about that too soon, Zoe. Get this one out of the way. <laughs> Roll the box if they can. And actually, you know, All Blacks need to remind themselves what it feels like to win because... You know, while we're seeing a few Kiwis do well in Birmingham, and isn't it fabulous? The All Blacks seem to have lost that winning feel, that winning habit. And I was thinking that today, I've covered a lot of All Black tests in my time, far too many probably, and the default kind of mindset with them is they are always so confident and they always have a spring in their step. And I guess that, that intimidation factor has kind of gone with this over these last few years where they've... Um, you know, they've been sort of easy beats to a degree, so they need to regain that, no doubt about it. Mm, I mean, is there anything for a Kiwi to grasp as a positive at the All Blacks this weekend? Look, I've been digging. Um, I was up at 4.30 this morning, Zoe. I, I still haven't got over my jet lag. Uh, 4.30 was better than 2.30, which was the previous two mornings. But I um, had one more story to file um, for a, a needy sub-editor, so I got that done at 4.30 in the morning. After that, I did a bit of digging. And look, there is something positive for Kiwis. Um, and it's not the form of the All Blacks, clearly not. And it's not that the South Africans aren't any good. They are bloody good. But it's that the All Blacks actually don't have any or much problem winning in South Africa, which sounds a bit crazy. But they've actually won their last four in a row, Zoe, and six of their last seven in South Africa. So this whole, this whole kind of vibe or theory that the box are this indomitable beast that can't be beaten, especially on a home soil, the, the, the stats and the figures don't back that up. So if All Blacks fans want to take something and if the All Blacks want to take something, it's that they've done this before, they can do it again. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Mark Hinton. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. It's going to be an incredibly exciting weekend for New Zealanders with Birmingham and the All Blacks. So much sport. Love it. Oh, producer Jono, it's all go at the moment. I tell you what, Zoe, I need to lie down, and I have done literally <laughs> zero sports for the entire duration of the Commonwealth Games, so I don't know what's wrong with me, but today, today and actually the last couple of days, it's just been absolutely hectic. I'm loving it, though. It's great. It's been so incredible. Great to see the likes of Taylor Ford win a bronze today. I interviewed her before the Games, and did you know that she trains against men? Because there aren't enough female competitors for her to train against. She's just well, incredible. I well, obviously that served her well in terms of, you know, getting her ready for the Games because she's coming home with a medal. Yes, it was wonderful to watch. And I hear you've got some royal news for us. Yeah, so it uh, turns out um, Duchess of Cambridge, Kate, or not Middleton anymore, but, you know, Duchess of Cambridge, Kate, she was on a, a public train heading to and from Birmingham over the last couple of days. And she ended up chatting to a young boy outside the Lou's while his dad was in there. She wanted to make sure this boy wasn't unaccompanied on the train. <laughs> The dad said he came out of the toilet and wanted to thank the lovely lady who'd been looking after his son, turned around and was just absolutely gobsmacked that it was her. <laughs> there was no security or anything. She was just there having a yarn to this little 10-year-old um, in the cubby hole outside the loo on the train. So uh, sounds like she's remarkably down to earth, loving it. I feel like this is becoming a royal podcast between me and Ian Anderson. <laughs>
<laughs> right? And so lovely that she was catching public transport and actually managed to get to the games on time. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> and that's the podium from day eight of the Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games. On behalf of Rob Van Royen and Ian Anderson in Birmingham, producer John O'Williams and audio editor Sam Scannell, I'm Zoe George. Join us tomorrow for bowls, netball, athletics, diving, wrestling, gymnastics, badminton and squash. Remember, you can find all the latest games action online at stuff.co.nz. And if you liked this podcast, check out more fabulous Stuff podcasts at stuff.co.nz forward slash podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from. Namihi, go well.